Okay, turn off the music. Turn off the music. Okay, you're all wondering, you're thinking, how do you make money on the web? You're thinking there's advertising, you're thinking, that's old fashioned, advertising's old fashioned, we need Coolio new things. Well, thank God we have Winston here who's going to tell us about Coolio new kinds of advertising. Thank you, Winston. Cheers. All right. Hey there. Hello there. Uh, good to be here. My name is Winston Bench. I'm the Managing Director of Interactive at Crisp and Porter and Bogusky in uh, Boulder, Colorado. We're an ad and design factory. Um, so I've been asked to talk a little bit about the future of advertising. I think it's, it's a, loaded, a loaded topic. And it's something I generally don't really like to focus much time uh, on because uh, for me it's really it's about what's happening now, right this minute. But I'm going to attempt to. And uh, it certainly doesn't take a visionary obviously to know that things are going more and more interactive every day. Um, you know, Forrester can tell you that. Uh, your clients can tell you that. Uh, things are getting pretty crazy out there. Um, you know, one thing I've noticed in, in my business is, you know, is interactive is it's no longer the afterthought of sideshow or the unloved stepchild, as I like to call it, in the hearts, minds, and wallets of CMOs. It's, uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, Companies and marketers have been saying that they're, they're digital interactive for a long time, but you know they'd ask for the TV spot before before anything, and sometimes you wouldn't even get to present your interactive ideas. But that's all changing. This is uh, Captain Ahab. He's a whaling captain, uh, and that's Thomas Edison. And what I think is happening right now is the the switch is about to flip on agencies, and and if ad agencies can't adapt, uh, they're going to go away. And uh, and if they can't adapt to what it takes to be digital and fully interactive and, and technologically savvy, uh, you know, they probably should look for a different um, kind of industry. So what does it mean for us? Um, same thing. It means for everybody. Embrace change passionately. Um, and, you know, there's no one right way to do it, but I'm going to talk about something, uh, you know, how we've set ourselves up over the last few years to be successful in the digital economy, um, or, or try to be, at least. Um, and also show you some work that you know we're really excited about putting en energy into. You know, and one thing on that is that I talked about a little bit previously, but you know, for us, um, you know, ideas don't really mean anything unless they're made, and we put all of our effort into trying to push them forward uh, at, at any given point and, and get them produced. Um, and so I'm going to kind of focus and, and show you some work that we're really excited about, uh, ideas that have been made or that we just made. So a little bit uh, about who we are. If you if you if you don't know us. We're an ad agency, as I said. Um, we're in Boulder, Miami, Gothenburg, uh, LA, and London. Gothenburg is our new CPB Europe hub. We just opened that in June. We're really excited about it. And one thing of note, um, we purchased an agency, Daddy, uh, a digital agency, uh, very strong, that we've worked with for a bunch of years. And, and the thing for us is that rather than start um, something organically, we wanted to start with an agency and with a core that was completely digital. So. Their strength is in interactive and digital, and what we're going to be doing, and what they're going to be doing, is they're going to be starting to do more integrated and, and, and you know, cross-media work. Um, but again, that strength is going to be around the, the center's technology. There's about 950 of us. We're all crazy fanatics. Uh, we have billions and stuff up there. Oh, sorry. Um, our business model. You know, we uh, we don't look for ad people. We look for smart people, and. Uh, that's really how it works for us. I mean, so um, we're, we're constantly evolving. When I talk about change, um, you know, change and, and do it passionately, you can't do it by hiring people from old model industries or old model ad agencies. You have to hire people that are really happy with what they do. And for us, we want people pretty much across the board now that, you know, have super, a lot of passion for, for interactive and technology. We also have no silos. We have a lot of interactive people. We have a lot of media people. We have a lot of creative people. Uh, some product innovation design, design, uh, design team, and, and but they don't sit in a, a separate department. Everyone kind of works together uh, on projects. And no timesheets. Um, this is kind of a big deal for us, in that we've always felt timesheets are a little bit silly because, you know, a lot of times you're working on something. Maybe you change your idea about you, what you want it to be, and then you, you know, if you're working on time and materials basis, you have to stop and tell the client, well, you know, sorry, we're not going to finish because we ran out of time. We think that's kind of silly. We like to deliver scope and deliver ideas. Uh, focus on business momentum versus deliverables. We do TV spots, but generally we like to respond to business challenges, um, not specific assignments. 
This is a look at our accounts. That's Volkswagen North of America, uh, American Express, Burger King, Coke Zero, Old Navy, Domino's, Pizza, Buell. Uh, it's, a, it's a sport bike. Um, it's part of Harley Davidson, Hulu, which is an internet, internet TV channel that you guys probably all know about over here. So we have a wide mix of clients. We do interactive uh, for everyone. Um, but we're also interactive agency of record for a, a group of our clients, such as Burger King, Domino's, meaning that we do every single piece of digital for them. So we've been um, just kind of back up and, and take you through what we've been doing the last few years in interactive and, and talk about how we adjust to the, the changing agency environment or just adapting to the needs. We've been doing it for seven years now. Um, we had early success um, for Burger King, Mini USA, and Virgin Atlantic. Um, at the time, this is a site called Subservient Chicken that we did a few years ago. Now you might have heard of it. Um, and the idea you know, around this, of course, was that you could type in different um, statements and the chicken would dance, and it became a pretty big viral hit, at least in the US. Um, and at the time when we were doing interactive, no one really asked us to. We, uh, we didn't have any technologists. We had a, one guy named Jeff Benjamin, who I'll get to in a second, who's our executive creative director, and just a bunch of other scrappy uh, creative people that just really were passionate about wanting to do digital. And at the time, so we were really just doing microsites, emails, banners, um, real just core advertising work. Um, and it, it, and it, it really kind of, you know, we got some momentum around it. And, and the one thing, though, is that we actually started getting enough traction that our clients were like, well, you know, wait, maybe you should do all of our interactive, not just the advertising. So in 2005, we took um, over the interactive AOR for uh, Volkswagen, uh, and we had a chance to kind of reflect and say, well, how can we do this bigger, beg, you know, uh, bigger and better? Um, what do we need to do? And we were looking around, and we said, well, you know, we've got we've to get better at this tech stuff. Um, so we put together some simple goals. We said, you know, we're not going to work with um, you know, partners 90% of the time, development partners. We're actually going to build our own development capability. And the reason that, for that is that, you know, ad timelines aren't software timelines. They're, they're very short, like three days, maybe two. And, you know, it was, it's really challenging working with um, uh, vendors and third parties to get things done because of those compressed timelines. And also, there's cultural differences, right? So, you know, if you work with another agency, they may get a little bit weird about, you know, what you want to say. So improving campaign integration was one thing. Driving innovation, which was a key piece. Not having technologists in our building. I mean, we were really kind of always behind the times. And you know, we, had, we had these great ideas, but we weren't infusing them with like, solid tech thinking. So talk about the short on the timelines, improving quality, because we could move quicker, prototype up front uh, in the process. And then the big thing for us was moving interactive and moving digital to the center of our culture. So this is something that four years ago that we wanted to strive to do, and we really, you know, didn't really think too much about the future per se, but we thought about what we wanted to do then and what, what we were up against. Um, so the first thing we did is start, we created a leadership team, um, brought in some knowledge experts. So we hired these guys. This is the uh, A-Team. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this 80s TV program, um, but that is a big thing, and if you notice, there's four people up there, and that's, this is a big shift for an ad agency, because the ad model, the traditional ad model is, an, uh, is really, really based around an account director, a creative director, and a planner, and maybe a copywriter. It's very, you know, a lot of it happens in dark rooms, and it, and it really is kind of this isolationist, although very creative process, and the thing about, you know, the, I don't need to tell everyone here, but the thing about interactive is that it's a team sport. It's, it's, it's software development takes all types. It takes pr producers being involved, and everyone's creative. It takes the experience director. It takes the technology director and the creative director all working together uh, from concept to completion. So this was a big shift for our agency is to kind of change that model of, of where creative is coming from. And uh, just to kind of quickly go through, so Jeff is our ECD of interactive. And, you know, we, we don't really... You know, we still have interactive titles, and, and, and our long-term play is that we think we all become generalists, and everyone's working interactive, but we still have them. So we also have Scott Prindle, who's our director of emerging technology, um, who really is in charge of, of both the development. We have, you know, 50 or 60 developers in-house now, uh, which is another thing that's uh, somewhat rare for an ad agency. 
Um, you know, then me, I oversee the production marketing, and then Matt Walsh, who oversees experience design, IA, um, and uh, interaction design. So then we, uh, beyond the leadership team, we also built out our capability. I talked about the 50, 60 people uh, to kind of really build stuff and help us prototype, get smart, build up some of those things. And, uh, th you know, the big shift for us, I think, ultimately was when we first said, let's build technology into our company. And we said, well, maybe is it a production arm? Do we make it, you know, is it kind of like an internal vendor? And, you know, immediately we said no. Um, and you can see here, this is a geek and an ad guy. Um, and the old model, again, is, is much more separate, right? You, you'd concept and then you'd pass it over to the geek and, and they'd get it done, but there wouldn't be much contact. So what we did is we put technology right in the creative department. So Scott Prindle, our tech director, sits right next to Alex Bogusky and Jeff Benjamin and, and everyone's kind of collaborating throughout the process. And for us, technology, this isn't a new thing for people in Silicon Valley or Web 2.0, but it's a big thing for marketing. It's a big thing for advertising. You consider technology a creative uh, pursuit and, 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 a, and, a, and a task. It's not just an executional piece of your business. So I think for us, when we talk about the future, I really don't, you know, I, I can't say we're completely set up right to do it, but I know we're going in the right direction because we have that technology thinking and leadership embedded in the core of our, uh, our creative practice. And, and for us, everything happens around the idea of people. And, and, and really, if you want to be savvy and you want to move, move the needle digitally, you've got to have that tech there. But as much as, you know, we've evolved the model, um, you know, some of our guiding principles have held true, and I think that's a, a very important thing as ad agencies consider and evolve, is that you, you, you don't just start over. It's an evolutionary process, right? And so for us, it's still very much about the creative idea, um, the business idea. What, what is the thing that is going to change culture around this brand or the perception of it? And for us, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but it's not, it's not just saying, okay, we're going to make a, a, an AR app or a mobile app for this brand. It's really saying, what is your business challenge? What is that? What do you need solved? And, and one thing that's really important for us is, you know, how can we create conditions for cultural change around our brands? And what I mean by that is, um, you know, we believe that a um, culture should change to adapt to a brand rather than a brand change to adapt to culture. And what you find is that pop culture is pretty malleable. Um, we worked for Mini USA a few years ago, and it was right about the time when uh, SUV, the craze in the, in the States, was, was still pretty out of control. And, you know, with Mini, we had to identify, well, these things were super small, and that's not what people wanted. So we, we mined for this cultural tension around that small was somehow looked at as being bad. And so we tried to create some conversation, dialogue, we're putting up some of these billboards, um, did some interactive work around it. Um, and really, I think the next day there was a, a, you know, after we put this up, there's a USA Today article about how, you know, SUV sales were going to continue to um, uh, improve and increase in volume. And so we were a little, a little afraid, but then a few weeks later, people were burning Hummers and stuff in the US. So um, we like to think we had some part to do with that. So there's a few levers and tactics we use to create this change and adjust the cultural conditions around our brands. And, you know, I think that those are relative regardless of what's going to happen to the future of advertising. Because, again, if our mission is to make brands famous, to change culture, um, some of these things are kind of timeless, you know, just the tactics change. So one, start with a true understanding of the product. We, we believe that uh, advertising in its, in its most traditional construct is pretty flawed. Um, that's why, you know, sometimes you see an ad and you're like, well, they're kind of full of shit. You know, it's, they're lying. And, and one reason, if you look at this graph we have, is that you can see these concentric circles, products in the middle, packaging, distribution, advertising. Advertising is the furthest thing away from the product experience and the truth around it. And a lot of times you'll see companies where engineers and marketers never talk to each other until maybe the very end of the, uh, end of the process. There's some great companies, of course, out there that, you know, flip this and, and they do it right. But a lot of times, you know, it's just, it's way too far down the, uh, the product uh, development cycle to, to, to really get to the truth around the product. And so for us, 
we always try and look and get to the product. That's why I talk about business challenges. We don't want to just have a marketing assignment. We want to understand the truths around your product, get to the experience, and really what we say is that our core competency should be consumer interaction. Um, and, and that was something that existed before we were even doing digital. And, and the cool thing about digital is, again, this is, this, is, this is a new idea to most marketers. And you know, I, I hear a lot of marketers say, well, where's my platform? You know, where's my product? And, and my digital product, and I, and I think people are still trying to figure it out. Again, Silicon Valley understands this in the product and services area, but what, I, what we get excited about as marketers is that digital can be product in itself. Marketing can be product. It can be an ancillary one, and, and, it can, and what I like about that is it, it gets to what users need, consumers need. It's not just clutter. It's not in their way. It's not too interruptive. So we uh, work for Domino's in the United States. It's a uh, pizza company and they make sandwiches and a bunch of other stuff. And really, where they, where they first made their mark when they started out is they were essentially a delivery company, um, much similar to FedEx we have. And they, they're in, they always had an innovation story around uh, delivery. And so one thing that you know, we, we're particularly proud of and that we think is, is, is telling is of where things are going and, and you know, usage and our getting results for our clients is in this utility and service space. So this pizza tracker idea, um, they have a system that tracks um, throughout their franchisees and it, it knows when your pizza goes in the oven. It knows who puts the pizza in the oven. It knows who's driving your, your pizza to your house. So when you order a pizza online uh, on Domino's, you can track it. And the policy is, you know, we say 30 minutes or less. So you can actually see where it is in, in the chain, in, in that, in that chain. And so this thing has been really successful for us and for the brand. Um, and I think is, is we really want to keep digging down into this kind of space for, for more of our brands. And, and really, this is a, a digital representation of the product. And what's exciting is that it, it, you, know, you get real-time business results. We are also now just launched the smartphone version. And of course, this is another exciting area for us is e-commerce and this, the mobile space. And you know, I'm not going to dig down too deep into this, but um, it's an area we're going to continue to explore. The next one. Uh, lever two, build utility into your advertising. Uh, that word gets bandied around a lot, utility, but it means something to me, and, and, uh, and, and I think in, in, in it's, it's something that we like to really focus on. We, um, you guys might have heard this of campaign. This is uh, Burger King's Whopper Sacrifice. It was a campaign we did for them. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a campaign we did for them last year, and um, the idea here is that um, if you defriend 10 people on Facebook will give you a Whopper. And, uh, and, and really, w how it came about is that we were starting to think about, well, you know, we had a lot of viral hits as, you know, not to, you know, that word, again, doesn't mean much to me, but we had some entertainment marketing hits that made people laugh. And what we found is that, you know, I was reading last night or the night before that there's over 3 trillion URLs out there. It's harder to make a splash with just a few jokes. And, and so, we knew that our demographic for Whopper was in the 18 to tw you know, 24 demographic range, huge Facebook users. Everyone at our agency at the time seemed to have Facebook open on their site when you walked around. And so when we looked at Facebook, we started thinking about, well, how are we going to get people to really kind of engage with this? And, and the way we thought about it was, well, how could we make the experience better? How could we make Facebook better even for ourselves? And um, Jeff Benjamin had looked down and saw he had like 1,300 friends, and he told me he only had five friends. <laughs> so so we, we saw a problem, we saw a need, and we wrapped the brand into it. So I'm going to play a little video here. Burger King knew that America loved the Whopper, but wanted to prove it. So it turned to Facebook and put the love to the test. Everybody loves adding friends, but is that simply because it's fun to see your friend list pile up? Well, what if there was a way to dump friends and get rewarded for it? And what if this turned into a race to dump them before they dumped you? Meet Whopper Sacrifice. Delete 10 friends and receive a free Whopper. A true moral dilemma, a telling choice. What do you love more, your friends or the Whopper? A difficult question to answer, or was it? Almost instantly, people were sacrificing their friends for Whoppers like crazy, to the tune of 200,000 friends sacrificed in just over a week. And people's burning desire to dump friends for the Whopper challenged the very concept of Facebook. 
instead of embracing this new marketing opportunity and the 35 million free media impressions it received, Facebook began limiting its functionality, ultimately forcing Burger King to take it down. Whopper's sacrifice had been sacrificed. But despite the application's short-lived activation, Burger King proved what it knew to be true, that Americans love the Whopper more than they like their friends. Thanks for watching. Thanks. So when you look at the numbers, uh, you know, I mean, I think it's, we, we think it's a, actually, you know, metrically it's, it's, it's a meager success. It obviously did a lot for the brand and, and you guys seem, some of you seem to have heard of the campaign, which is excellent. And it, it got maybe a few more people in the store, but really for us, it's just the beginning. And where I see this going next for us is, is how can we weave in you know, the e-commerce elements into these social um, ideas, again, to bring more value. The next one, let ideas find a medium. This is, this is also an important thing for us. Um, we don't really believe just because there's a great, you know, whiz-bang technology out there that you should do something with it. Um, you know, it, for us, it really has to make sense with the idea and, and your consumers have to, there has to be a need for it. And so when we start, um, and this has always been our model, and I think it will continue to be our model as long as new media channels are developed, it's, it's not gonna really change, is that we try and focus on one central creative idea around a campaign. And it's not a TV script, it's not a website idea, it's usually a press release. And, and the idea, again, is that we're trying to figure out how can we affect culture in some way, get, get people talking about our brands, get a conversation started. And so the press release is a great way to start because you can really start to see the stickiness of, of what you're doing. And once we've got a, you know, a base idea, you know, I think just to give you an example for, you know, we, we, in Hulu, we worked in Hulu on, in, the, in the States, and you know, we really like this cultural tension around the fact that TV you know, is bad for you and it rots your brain. That's what they say, I'm told. And the, uh, the, the idea with Hulu, of course, is that you can take TV wherever you go. And so the, our, our kind of a creative idea became around this thing like Hulu, an evil plot to destroy the world. And it, again, there you're getting in kind of this cultural terrain where it's a, there's an intrigue created and also a mystery and also you know, some question. So once that idea is set, then we start thinking about how would this manifest itself and, and across different media channels. In the case of Hulu, for example, we didn't do any digital because you know, Hulu kind of stands on, on, on its own legs and had driven quite a user base without it. Great marketing just embedded in that product. Um, Old Navy's a client of ours, and, and I think that you know, this is one where you can really start seeing where one idea just spins off a into all these different channels. And so Old Navy is a clothing store in the US, um, and they've always been known for having kind of like kitschy in-store experiences, really rememberable in-store experiences. Um, and one thing we wanted to do is we looked at mannequins. And mannequins, I don't know if you've looked at mannequins lately, but they're really boring and they're depressing because apparently mannequins have not smiled since the Great Depression. So A, we wanted to change that. We wanted to liven up the in-store experience. So we created this serial campaign called Supermodelkins. And Old Navy um, had some deals and uh, uh, coupons they wanted to give out on a weekly basis. So. Over 20 some weeks, we said we we're gonna do a new, new TV spot where we launched this kind of ongoing serial story about these supermodel cleans. And we would also create a, a digital experience that you know, would deliver the payoffs and the promotion. And so what we came up with is this, this site that is, you know, to me, it's, it's been an amazing thing to work on and a great success because we said, well, how can we reinvent the prom promotion because you know, just a coupon giveaway is not very exciting. And so we made it somewhat of a game and what we found that, you know, we update this every week with different discounts and offers and people went crazy for it. And people, people still do, people were hacking into the site trying to get them. And the, the traffic every week for, you know, a brand microsite's pretty healthy. And, you know, this is something we continue to fuel. And an idea also that, you know, is, is new to ad agencies, um, it's not new to digital agencies, but if you're gonna evolve to be a digital interactive uh, capable shop, is you can't wait for campaigns. And you know, I think the old model is to, to write a brief, you know, spend a f month uh, coming up with a big idea, launching it, seeing what it does, doing it again, maybe doing that two or three times a year. 
But as people that know in the interactive space, you have to continually power your ecosystem with new ideas and content. So this is a little bit hard to read, but this is the you know, digital ecosystem around uh, this Old Navy Weekly or this brand. And you start seeing how it all works together from the banners to the, for our YouTube channel to mobile, circulars. And this is something that we look at now. We use these maps to kind of strategize about, well, how can we keep the momentum going? Um, you know, and then you also see, which I think is important, is that TV, video, is still very important to what we're doing. But it's just one piece of this greater, um, greater network. And I think that there's, uh, for a lot of agencies, this is a challenging thing to pull off because you are working cross-media and you're also using different skill sets. You're using the, uh, the power of narrative and storytelling and you're also using the more um, technology-driven um, uh, thought process. We also uh, created characters. This is Old Navy Heather for each of our supermodelkins and would every week announce the coupons uh, offers on here and each has a unique character. Alex Bogowski has been writing these himself, I believe, having some fun with it. But again, this is another way, and you know, this is this is not new now, but this was you know happened to you know uh, whenever we launched this uh, 23 weeks ago, uh, but was really kind of the first foray for us into uh, Twitter as far as a marketing tool. So last, I think this is my last one, last thing. This is the most important piece for me now, and really what we're thinking about: how is this new social world, social media world? Uh, going to affect what we do as marketers. And it, it's scary for a lot of people because, and I've seen it even in my own building, you know, people are kind of freaked out. They're saying, well, I can't control the message. You know, and you haven't been able to for a few years now. It's just easier to see that people are, if they don't like it, it's easier to see it. Um, so curate the conversation. Don't try to control it. Um, th that's an important idea. And a new thing, we're, you know, Best Buy is a client of ours, and, and one thing we're working with them, they're, they're a great client because they really like to push the envelope and in the innovation circles. They, you know, uh, open sourced their, the e-commerce engine a while back, as some, some of you may know, and, you know, continually trying to, you know, use the crowd to make their brand better. And so we came up with this idea called Twelve Force. We originally called it Tweet Force, but Twitter didn't like that. So we got, ended up with 12 Force. Twitter likes us a lot better than Facebook, which is good. Um, we haven't upset them too much. Um, and uh, the idea here is that you know, Best Buy, one of their offerings is that they have all of these blue shirts. And the blue shirts are the people in the stores. And they really pride themselves on the fact that they deliver the best uh, customer ex experience within a, a big box store around digital uh, and electronics. And so the idea here was to, how can we represent the soul of this brand and the soul of these people and really start reaching um, consumers in a new way to say, hey, you know what, this is a valuable offer. Why, you know, I'm not gonna buy in line because uh, necessarily from Amazon or anyone else because I'm gonna get this human experience and, and soulful touch. Hello. I'm finally going to get a flat panel in my home theater. <laughs> Thank you. What should I get? Uh, you. You should check out our new LEDs. The picture's better than life. Okay, but I don't want to pay too much. Don't worry about it. We'll match those other stores' prices. And we'll deliver and hook it up for free. Okay, last question. If you guys are here, who's in the stores? The latest home theater technology. And thousands of people eager to help. Best Buy. Buyer be happy. So the cool thing is, you know, you saw we, we drove directly to Twitter from the TV on that. And the, and the TV really, again, is, is more, I, I kind of call it like a culture grenade. It, it starts the conversation, but everything's happening here. The numbers right there are not overwhelmingly um, you know, blowing you away right now. But what we're excited about is that this is really igniting a lot of passion within the Best Buy uh, community itself. And it's a platform that we're going to continue to grow. It's also using customer service and taking it and t turning it into more of like a, a marketing weapon. And so that's something we're really interested in. And so to this curate conversation, you know, I think all of us, you know, in, in marketing and advertising, one of the biggest shifts is going to be just getting comfortable letting go, letting go control. It's not top down anymore. It's user based. It's about user needs. And that challenges the way that we've worked in advertising for a long time. I think it's really exciting. Um, so my last example here, this is our new website. Um, cbbgroup.com, it just launched today. 
Um, we did a beta version of this uh, in July and, and sent it out, got it out there, got a lot of great feedback from people. And the idea here is that we are using APIs. You can see Twitter barely up there. We have a news feed and that's you know, pulling in news and blogs. Uh, we kind of think that they're the same thing. Um, we also have on the, on the left there, you see Bramo, and above that says freelance. So we're also experimenting with some crowdsourcing as well here on, on some of our, our logo design. And the idea of the site is that we are capturing everything real time that's being said about our brand and our clients' brands. And we're not, we're not filtering it. And for me, this, this says a lot because when people get to work every morning, it does a couple of things. It gets them immersed in, in the social media conversation, gets more of where what's happening, but also shows what their work's doing. And if no one's saying anything about your work, it means you're not doing anything. You're not doing your job right. And you know, if you don't like what's being said about, your, about the work you're doing, then you have an opportunity to kind of change it and, and uh, go on from there. So this has been, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely drawn some protests in, in some senses, but we feel like this is a really important next step for our agency to take and really start realizing that this is the new way of doing creative, right? It's curating it and, and letting go of control and being okay with that. And then also really kind of reaching out and, and having and using, using our consumers more to really help shape, shape our advertising. And so we're also, um, we've, we put the, uh, the code on GitHub, and so it's open source, so if you have a license, you can get in there and, and you know, make your own version of our site and, and kind of mess, mess around with it. So we're pretty excited Julio. about it. Go check it out at cbbgroup.com. Julio. And uh, that's it. Thanks, all. All right. Really appreciate it. All right, so let me ask you a question. So you're comfortable with it, right? Yeah. And so somebody gets on there and starts bitching about Best Buy. What you gonna do? The well, there's there's a couple of things. One is that you know we aren't directly Best Buy has, has their own Twitter channel, where basically they're going out and, and doing real time customer service. We haven't gotten to the place yet where we're actually gonna respond directly to every single person. But what it's doing more is that we're it's starting to filter through the, through the agency. It's okay. You know what? We gotta kind of tweak some so, things. So um, something that they're selling is blowing up and it's really bad and so the the boss calls you up and says we need damage control we need to do something to make to make up to deal with the fact that these things are blowing up yeah and w would you guys get directly involved in that the way it's going to work best buy is awesome in this because like i said so that site is pulling in anything that's being said about best buy or cpv mm -hmm. and so it's also being aggregated probably through one of their you know, Twitter accounts that they have open. They're gonna either go direct them directly to them, and they've done a great job with that, I think, better than most brands. And I think we're, it's a collaborative thing. You so know, how about the we're, gonna, we're gonna say something. So the yeah, Domino's yeah. people, the delivery right. guys used to run people over, right? Yeah, the delivery, yeah. right? Okay, so uh, now would you tell the CEO at Domino's you're gonna have to start blogging to apologize? They already know, I mean, we've had, you know, from last year, there's been a couple, there was an <laughs> event. Okay. <laughs> you know, on YouTube where, you know, some people put up some kind of bad stuff about what they're doing the franchise the right. franchisees, and it was actually written it was about Saint because Louis or something? I think so, and yeah. I think there was some commentary about Domino's being slow to respond, but they actually did in turn respond, and they uh. published a video out there. I think that all the brands we're working with are starting to really understand this too. That if they're not reacting real time to feedback, they're going to be in big too trouble. Slow. Slow. And, and they're now, still slow. Now you're you know? the guys who did the point of sale Burger King game, right? Yeah, Xbox games. Do you all know about this game they did? Now this was a marketing promotion. It cost four dollars and ninety nine cents. It was a, a, a CD game that was selling by the cash register. How much money did it make? You know, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was a revenue maker. It was. It made money for the brand, and I, and I think it was over a hundred million dollars. He's go. being he he's being modest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this was a marketing campaign. It was so cool that they made some serious buku bucks. So this is an agency that's pushing the envelope and, and trying to keep it real. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Cheers. <laughs>